Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and a return with having. What I can tell you about people is there are some kind people in the world, and there are people who do not train their children how to behave. Twice now I've experienced a young black child who is still technically under the age of majority. I'm proposing that he is roughly 16 years old, possibly 17. He's a young boy with dreadlocks and a lot of attitude. I first met him in the drive through window at Wendy's. The first time or two, he was pretty respectful. He was very kind and very helpful. And openly, despite the fact that I have lived in poverty, they respected and regarded my money. Beyond that, they have still kept a supervisor that's got a lot of similar attitude as a white man, very difficult and somewhat androgynous. I'm only going to say that because men who care for themselves care for themselves, and other people who don't care for themselves don't care for themselves. But what I discovered this evening was I went to my favorite Burger King to pick up some burgers, and I found some generosity in the line. When I tried to stand at the window, one of my bills blew into the window from the breeze. I was sort of surprised by that because I did set it down for a moment and then I was like, nuts, they're closing up and I have to get some attention. The child that I just referenced came to the window and I said, could you get my dollar please, it blew in. And I was polite. But the player had an attitude on the face of, I'm not picking this up for you and I'm planning to keep it. And as soon as I saw that attitude in his eyes as an old man who recognizes that sort of behavior. I spent a hell of a lot of my 30s to 40s dealing with that sort of behavior in my own son and his friends. I'm not stupid. My point being that I did not presume his feelings, but I observed his behavior. He had no intention of picking it up. I got a little bit more demanding as an older gentleman saying, please pick up my bill and hand it to me. And with that, he did give it back but he basically shut the window and basically ignored my order. That was the attitudes that I had experienced at the Wendy's where he'd worked basically before and at a catty corner area of where he found employment. I would fault two people in this. I would not fault the manager on duty who's sort of a casual friend of mine who always treats me with love and regard. And I just mean that they're kind. The Burger King people, in general, in management, are very kind, especially their women. They work hard, they work a long shift, they're on their feet all day, and they really do the best they can with the crew they have. But they are not the main managers, they are not the training coordinators. So I would fault not only that child's parents that taught that boy that he could have an attitude in some store where he's employed, but I would also fault the training coordinator. You see, you don't just plunk another, a kid from another restaurant into employment acting like he knows what to do. And most companies don't always say why someone's let go or if they quit to avoid being let go. But the truth is, we have to pay attention to what we're doing in training our people. Because here's what that kid can do. In a matter of sections of getting somewhat understanding that I've already called the corporation on him the other day, with the handling of food that I've talked about in other videos. And literally, I provided them that feedback because companies need to know who's impacting their brands. But openly, a kid like that, with an attitude like that, can text fa fastly to his group of friends, and a few minutes later, within an hour or two, or much later in the night, when a man like me is sleeping, I can get pummeled by a crew of his. I'm not encouraging that but I know that that happens to people. I remember the article I read in the news about a man named Todd who last year, who was quite the problem. He was a victim of H. and Orn from his military days, allegedly, and that was a story on him. He had to have special things at the shelter when I ra rarely stayed there, but he was actually beaten to death by blacks in a park. Now, Todd was a very rude man always accosting people, always insulting people, and a very miserable soul. I can't imagine where he ended up after he passed. But my concern for companies is that when they don't take the time to sit a child down and really explain the value of food and the value of employment 
and the value of a customer's beliefs about them in a drive through or at a counter, they've discounted the value of the employee and their future in the company. You see, lots of companies in fast food experience a hell of a lot of attrition. It makes training coordinators not wanting to do a hell of a lot to train them because training has a time cost and time costs have a dollar cost. In other words, an expenditure for the company. They presume that most everyone in the world has eaten once or twice at a fast food restaurant and knows how to behave behind the counter, knows how to do the job. And then it's a matter of just learning the buttons on the computer of how to place an order and basically find the right food for a customer. But attitudes are things that we cannot change, but behaviors can take a matter of 30 days to alter. If you've got someone leaving a fast food restaurant, it is not my recommendation to hire them if it's been less than 30 days. And it's also important for them to investigate through the hiring process why they left the previous company and get the best, most honest answer that they can through casualness or whatever they need to do to learn. It is true, HR will not always say if someone is fired and why. That is the law in most states, to protect people to have the chance of starting over again. But when I make these recordings, when I think about my friend and her management duties, I felt bad for her because what I saw was a player at the window looking for support from a player in the food handling space for his attitudes of telling me to basically to take my work and my business elsewhere. Companies today that are desperate for employees and desperate for customers can't afford those attitudes. 